What's up everybody? This is Future Automation, a place where imagination meets reality and you're listening to Tejas. So guys, in previous video, we have discussed how we can use list and dictionaries. In this video, what we are going to do is we are going to understand how we can do some scripting using control flow. So basically scripting has many more things in the shortcut specifically, but what we are interested in is in control flow. So with a cup of coffee, let's get started. So guys, today what we want to do is we want to understand how we can use some control flows because at the end game, whenever you're creating some co complex shortcuts, you need control flow to make sure that the shortcut is having some level of interruption or some level of control over the flow, how we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, make sure that the shortcut is being executed in some or the other way so let's get into it so this is a all new shortcut that i'll be creating today so first let's go to the section where we'll find all these control flows so guys you can see here that few of the actions are added in the control flow from which one is choose from the menu second is if third is repeat repeat with each stop and output stop the shortcut wait and wait to return now what we are going to do is we are going to majorly focus on two things that is if else and the third second one is the repeat with each these two are major things that we are going to build our shortcut around today and others also i'll show you how they work but majorly we will try to focus on these two because these two are majorly used a lot now Taking some reference from previous shortcut and previous videos, what we are going to do today is we are going to build something similar to finding and location from the image. But this time what we are going to do is we are going to do it with an amount of images. So first action will be find photos. So we get that action and in the filter now here what you can do is now here find uh, all photos where we can also you know uh, have a filter that is where album is so if i have created already an album that is shortcut test in which we have few of the images if i'll click on play you can see that we have few of the images here so i'll uh, change the view and you can see here that i have a few of the images added in it for testing and now what we want to do is we want to repeat through these images now in this uh, requirement we have two options either we can go with repeat or we can go with repeat each we are going to go with repeat each i'll tell you why first i'll show you why repeat so the reason is that we cannot go with repeat because we need to have the idea of how many uh you know quantity that is the quantity of the data that you are going to get from the list and in this case though we know but mostly it can be a scenario that uh, you know you don't have an idea of what amount of data you're going to get so you cannot go with repeat although repeat with each is far far more useful than repeat the reason being is that repeat does not need the range of how much amount of time it needs to execute now those who are from the uh, cse or the programming background they already must be aware with the for each loop this is same to that so basically what it does it from the list each and every object is iterated in this loop and on each and every object we can work out so moving forward what is the next action that we are going to do is we have added repeat with each atom from the photos now what we need to do is we need to get the location so get details and here you can see that we have get details from image and now here if we click on details we'll get the location here now the, i want to show you that uh, how uh, this particular action is optimized now if previously if you have seen here 
then we have around five to six images. But when I'll click on this, you can see that we are only getting four locations. The reason being is I have purposefully added few of the images which don't which do not have any kind of location in it. So that shows you that how optimized this action item is. You don't have to add any kind of specific, uh, you know, uh, specific uh, condition here to go through the each image and check if you have a location or not. That is done by the single action. Now, next is what, as usual, we'll go through, uh, choose from the list. So maybe I'll, I'll click on list and choose from the list. And this list will be now the repeated results. So the ultimate result that we're getting from this particular loop, we are going to select from that. And then in the maps, what we're going to do is we're going to open it in maps. Now, if I will click on play, it'll ask me which location I want to open here. And then if I will click on say white field from Bangalore, uh, we'll get the location here. So it's it's really great uh, that you have this kind of control flow here and it helps you to build complex shortcuts with different decision making uh, scenarios. Now, moving to if, so I'll close everything, delete the actions, delete, delete. Now, to create a if shortcut, what I have decided is I'll show you a quick uh, scenario. So say, for example, you're working with files application. So I'll go with files and there we have an option, uh, get contents of folder. So, uh, basically what it does is, uh, it will go and it will check that, okay, you have a folder and in that folder, it will go and check that whether you have files or not. So I have already created a folder with name test and it doesn't have anything in that. So it is an empty folder. And now we are going to understand why we need to use if. Although most of the programming background guys or majorly all the people who have somewhat exposure to the programming, they are already aware that why we use if. So that's the same scenario here as well. If contents of folder has any value, then what we'll do is we'll click on notification and we'll show a notification here saying that hello world. And if we don't have anything, we'll say, we'll show an alert here. Uh, do you want to continue? And now, since the folder is not having anything, we'll see and it'll give, you a, uh, it'll give us an alert that, okay, do you want to continue or not? So basically that's what it is. Now, there are a few more things that I want to show you from control flow. Number one is shop, stop this shortcut. So uh, we'll use that same here as well. If we do not have anything in the folder, and now I'll also show you that, okay, it, now since this is the last action, maybe you will not, uh, uh, you know, uh, get an idea, okay, it is really stopping a shortcut or not. So I'll, I'll show alert below this. And now based on the logic that we have implemented and what I am explaining you, it should not show the alert, but it should stop the shortcut before that. Since uh, shortcuts are going in an ordered way from top to bottom, you need to understand that how it is, how the flow will go on. So you can see that it is not showing an alert because we have stopped the shortcut here itself. So that's what it basically does. It stops the shortcut. Now, again, we'll go back in scripting and check, uh, so choose from menu. I don't think that I need to explain, even if I want to, I can show you that, okay, we have, uh, you know, multiple menus here that we can write. And based on that menus here, some, uh, some, uh, blocks will be created. So if I'm clicking on win, then what will happen? If I'm clicking on two, what will happen like that? But basically, choose from menu is uh, not used much, at least in my use case. I have mostly used list and all, and based on that, I'm, you know, performing some action. And also, you can see here that we can stop here, and we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, this, what it will do basically is, it will stop the shortcut, and it will show the output that you want to show here. So if I click on uh, output, since there is no any, you know, uh, value here, what we can do is we can say no data, uh, you know, click somewhere else. And if we play, hopefully it should show. You can see here it is showing no data because it is stopping the uh, shortcut and it is showing you the data. Now, these 
basically stop the stop and output wait wait to return uh, these kind of actions are basically useful when you want to debug the shortcut since this is a small shortcut we don't have to worry about it much but if you're creating a complex shortcut which we are going to do in the next video we are going to create a full-fledged working shortcut which we'll be using uh, for our day-to-day -day task and I'll not, uh, you know, uh, mess up the suspense. I will show you uh, when I'll create the next video and it will be really fun and lots of learning. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well. So when you create a complex shortcut and sometimes things don't work out, at that time you need to debug the shortcut and that's really not an easy task so you have to use these kind of actions so that's it uh, if you are using wait so what wait basically will do is it will wait for the number of seconds that you specify so you can wait for one second two second and if you click on play it will show you a, a small animation here uh, like for how much amount it is waiting and wait to return basically what it does is whenever you want to uh, perform an action between applications at that time uh, wait to return is used so uh, wait to return what it will do is it will wait for you to switch the app and then come back and then it will perform some action that you have mentioned after this so yep that's it guys i think this was really a quick uh, video and this was really uh, based for only the control flow and majorly if and repeat with each and then small amount of information for the rest of the action items so make sure you explore the control flow and other scripting parts as well because these things are going to come in handy when you're going to start working on complex shortcuts and if you like the video make sure you hit the like button if you have any kind of queries you hit them in the comment section you can also connect me on instagram or linkedin i'll leave the handles below and if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends who are having these ios devices because uh, this is really handy and it uh, makes your life way more easier than you think once we'll create a complex shortcut you'll get an idea of what i'm talking about so that's it guys uh, make sure you explore the full shortcut app i really encourage you make sure you create some shortcuts and keep innovating guys take care thank you